Welcome. Last time we talked about ARIMA models, but what are seasonal ARIMA models? First, we have to remember what AR and MA models are. If you forgot, you can check out the videos by clicking on the information circle in the upper right hand corner. Of course, if you don't want to miss these videos in the future, you can click subscribe in the lower right hand corner. Boom, marketing done. So, what are these models? Remember, AR models forecast a series based solely on the past values of the series. These are called lags. MA models, on the other hand, forecast a series on past values of the errors in the series. These are called error lags. Remember? Good. Let's remember some more. This led us to the notion of how ARIMA models are written mathematically. ARIMA models are typically written, as you see here, with three numbers that summarize them. P, the number of AR terms, D, the number of first differences, and Q, the number of MA terms. But what if? What if your data actually had a notion of seasonality to it? Energy fluctuates depending on hour of day. Sales fluctuate depending on time of year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This effect can still be an AR, a lag effect, or an MA, error lag effect. But be careful. Remember that ARIMA models are stationary models. Yep, going back down memory lane. Remember, seasonal data is not stationary by design. Again, click on the link in the upper right-hand corner for a refresher on stationarity. Sorry, these videos are all connected. However, we can take differences. It isn't the only solution, but it is a common one. This differencing will make our data stationary. However, that doesn't mean you have removed the seasonal correlations. What happened one season's number of data points can still impact the current data point. And that's great. So our data looks a lot more stationary, but we still have the underlying patterns that still exist. Excellent. This leads to the creation of the seasonal ARIMA model. We still have the regular ARIMA pieces. Little p represents the number of AR terms. Little d, the number of first differences. Little q, the number of MA terms. However, we now have the seasonal components to the model as well. Big P represents the number of seasonal AR terms. Big D is the number of seasonal differences. Big Q is the number of seasonal moving average terms. How big is this season? In other words, how many data points are in each season? That is what S tells us. All right, let's finish this up with an example. Can you write out what this model would be in ARIMA 101-21012? Waiting. Waiting. Okay, this is counting against my time, so I'm just going to show you. First, always start with your differences. We have a seasonal difference. How big? 12. So that means we have a seasonal wave through our data that is 12 time periods long. To get rid of that, we take a seasonal difference of 12, yt minus yt minus 12. So that means we lag back 12 time periods for our difference to get to wt. No little d differences for us here, so differences are done. Time for the rest of the model. Let's start with all the AR pieces first. One little p, so we have a single lag of wt with wt minus 1. We also have two seasonal lags of wt big P of two. So we have a lag at T minus 12 and T minus 24 because our season is 12. See what I did there? Whenever you see these seasonal pieces, big P or big Q, you're just putting lags at every season. We have a big P of two. So we have lags for two seasons. Again, T minus 12 and T minus 24. If you had a big P of three, it would be lags at 12, 24, 36. You get the idea. Lastly, we have a little Q of one for our one moving average term at lag one at the end. Boom, you figured out the model. So what are seasonal ARIMA models? Those are seasonal ARIMA models in under five minutes.